Welcome to Rocky News, Will's World. I know there's been a bit of a break. Uh, apologies for that, been away. Uh, been a bit of holiday, that sort of thing. Uh, been eating too much. Anyway, cracking on with it. It's been quite interesting uh, over the last few weeks. Um, missed the Aussie South Africa game. Wow. It'd be very interesting to me to see if the Aussies can come back for that. I'm sure if, uh, if I was in the All Blacks camp, I would prefer them just to lose in a normal way to the South Africans, all joking aside, because. Uh, there's going to be some sort of backlash against the All Blacks, uh, as whether they come back really powerfully or whether they completely disintegrate. I don't think they'll disintegrate somehow. So uh, I think the Blacks would have preferred to have seen a normal game rather than a complete stuffing. Other interesting news um, Rob Andrew has uh, blamed all the uh, problems in the last three or four years in English rugby on Clive Woodland. Clive, obviously, uh, Sir Clive doesn't like that, um, and has asked Barron to publish the report he gave it, um, which Baron won't. So I'm sure Baron will, um, will be pleased that Rob's put him under pressure. But I think it's an interesting view to blame the guy who, who did bring the World Cup to him um, for all the problems since. So uh, that's an interesting angle from Rob. He is apparently, though, Stephen Jones, very popular with you Kiwi boys, Stephen Jones' is Hero of the Week, um, because he has said that from now on the RFU will not fund any more purchases of rugby league players. To get that cloth cap man, no more rugby league players can be purchased by the football union, reading between the lines, because they obviously think they're shite. <laughs> um, Epi Tyone, so you're just talking about a few purchases. Quinns have, have, have purchased Epi Tyone. I was talking to Dean Richards about that. Um, and he said, Quinns have really struggled. Since I retired, they've never um, managed to replace me with a, a genuinely hard bloke. Um, which you know, I can understand, there are not many of us around. So they've gone for Epi. You know, and I'm not sure, I, sometimes I think he's a, he's a wee bit soft, but I um, think they do all right. I also noticed that um, Josh Lewis has been reported to be playing touch rugby on Clapham Common. There's a Labour MP played touch something on Clapham Common, wasn't there? I think it's quite well known for that. You touch me, I'll touch you. All that sort of stuff. And, ooh, <laughs> made me sting. Maybe my eyes water, um, stand, maybe feel dirty. Anyway, Josh obviously not been doing that at all, he's just been playing touch rugby. Um, but uh, yeah, Cup and Common, interesting place to play. Um, oh, great bit of news, the Welsh have uh, announced their, uh, is it nearly £80 for their new new shirt? The new Welsh shirt. I'm struggling with that, you know. I know it's retro, and they, I mean, they've cleaned it off completely, I like that. You know, not even the Welsh feathers on it. Um, but it's going to clash with the England shirt, isn't it? I mean, it might, it just, I mean, I know there's the sort of taking off the advertising, I'm all in favour, but I think that's too plain, personally. I'm not sure it says Wales to me, in any shape or form. <sighs> Looking at the site, being a big debate, um, fastest winner. To be honest, uh, guys and girls, I don't know, my view is it's not flat out speed, it's 100 metres is irrelevant in a rugby game. When does anyone run 100 metres in a straight line? It's acceleration, balance, change of pace, change of direction, all that sort of stuff. And for me, the, the five guys would be Thao Thao, uh, Robinson, Cullen, Habana, uh, and bizarrely, Rory Underwood. Some of you might think, but he was incredibly powerful as, as well as fast. And I, I think if you had to pick out of all that lot, I would say it's probably Thao Thao. I think the guy's amazing. Other parts looking at the site, I've got to do this. Um, I don't know if any of you noticed that uh, on the Laugh I Need to Laugh site, some people have been posting a few bits. And Mad Max has posted one of the funniest ones that I've seen for a very long time. Uh, it's worth having a look at in the full, but I can just read you clips. It's a memo from Osama bin Laden to his cave members. Um, Hi guys, we've all been putting in long hours recently. But we've really come together as a group, and I love that. Then there's a clip here. Second, it's not often I make a video address, but when I do, I'm trying to scare the shit out of the world's population, okay? That means that while we're taping, please do not ride your scooter in the background or keep doing the was up thing. <laughs> Third, I, t I bought a box of Dairy Lee recently and clearly wrote Aussie on the front and put it on the top shelf. Two of my Dairy Lee slices have gone. <laughs> Um, five, graffiti. To whoever wrote Osama donkeys on the group toilet wall, it's a lie. The donkey backed into me. 
<laughs> and finally, we've heard that there may be SAS soldiers in disguise trying to infiltrate our ranks. I want us to set up patrols to look for them. First patrol will be Omar, Mohammed, Abdul, Akbar, and Dave. <laughs> Ah oh dear, sorry, um, but it amused the hell out of me. Looking at the site, I uh, see Scott Quinnell is back. He has remembered his password. Um, so he goes alongside Rob Jones um, as two highly intelligent Welsh men. Um, good to see you back, Scott. Uh, it's interesting actually, because always, you know, people always think that the Welsh hate the English. Um, and uh, obviously they do, and you can't blame them for that. But there are a few Englishmen who hate the Welsh, uh, and Rob Jones in particular. I don't know if I've told this story before, but I'm going to tell you this, because um, it I never dawned on me that, the, that we were like that until we were playing them in uh, 91. Um, and Richard Hill was playing, and I didn't realise, obviously, I didn't know, I'm an astute captain, that uh, he had captain in 87, when they'd been a big punch-up, when Wade Dooley had broken uh, Phil Davis's jaw, all that sort of stuff. Um, anyway, so Hilly's back in the side, the first time for a long time, and uh, we're down in Cardiff. And it was Friday night doing the team talk, and I used to sit in the front of them, because it was the only way I could make them realise I was meant to be captain. Um, anyway, so uh, in, try and make it more interesting, because otherwise it was just me talking. I got Dean Richards to say what was going to be crucial, um, Royal Andrew, and Hilly. And Hilly completely lost it a few minutes into his, his chat about whether we are going to try and keep the game, what areas of the game, I'll keep the stretch that. He just completely lost it. About Robert Jones, he said, you know, if you ever get older, you'll snap his fingers, you know, gouge his eyes, break his neck, you know. I mean, he, he, veins sticking out on his neck, he was shaking, he'd, he'd gone, he was almost foaming at the mouth. And I'm sitting there looking at him, and he was sort of there, and he's standing up. And uh, and all I could see was people like Winterbottom and uh, Richards and T, their shoulders going as they pissed themselves laughing. Anyway, so we calmed calm him down, um, we broke some Valium pills and put them into his food dinner and so everything sort of calmed down and then uh, in the change room you know we'd had the final lot two minutes to go we're all standing around and uh wade and wade was was quite close to me and hilly said you know we'd won the toss we knew we were kicking away we knew what we we're trying to do and hilly sort of said well can i just say something and i looked at him quite carefully he said no no i'm fine i said yeah, yeah. so he sort of said look guys you know we're kicking off left we're doing this you know we want to know which channels we want to keep it in or, you know, and then he lost it again and then he's shaking and I remember the surreal view of Wade Dooley taking him and patting him on the head. Wade Dooley saying calm down. Anyway we ran out, what really amused me was we ran out and I was calling all the guys together, um, the old arms park and uh, it's quite emotional, um, the world's got quite emotional down there. Um, and I got everyone together and I looked around and the only guy missing was Hilly who was standing at the tunnel just on the pitch you know, waiting for the Welsh boys to come out which must have been quite a frightening sight, all five foot nine or whatever. And him and Robert Jones obviously had this complete thing going. Because it's about 15 minutes into the game, it was 9 3 what it was to us as a penalty. And I sort of went forward, told Tom Hodgkinson to, to, to kick the goal. And all I heard Hilly shouting was, That's 3 in nil. I said, Hilly, no, that's fine, mate, it's 9 3. And he'd got. He said, No, it's 3 nil. I said, Why? He said, The first, like the first rock of the game, he said, I got. Robert Jones in there, he said, I stamped on his ankle. He said, I was all there. He said, I've crushed us, squeezed his... He said, I was 2-0 there, I think he just gouged, gouged his eye out. And he'd, he'd gone, completely gone. And Josie was... You were just the same, Josie. You were a nasty little bastard. Although, because um, Josie and I ended up on the 93 line, so we were, we were uh, uh, dirt trackers. Um, and uh, and Josie came up with a great idea, or I blame Josie. We used to have to have tea and stickies after training sessions. Tiggy, me... Jones, Clem, just to keep our spirits up, because we weren't doing a lot, we certainly weren't playing any rugby, because we were shy. Uh, so we used to have tea and stickies. And, uh, and after that, it completely ruined my relationship with the Welsh, because I do remember being in a ruck and a, a ruck, must have been a ruck, I didn't get involved in the walls, um, in the arms park, England Wales, on the bottom of it, and jo I suddenly hear this giggling, and I look around and it's Jonesy. And, you know, England Wales, it's not going to happen, is it? In this ruck, and he looks at me and goes, do you think we're going to get a kick in, Will? And we're laughing. And I said, Jones, we shouldn't be laughing, you know, this is a serious game. And he was just, he started talking about what we're going to do that evening. Not on. It's a serious game. Um, but anyway, good to have you back, Scott and, uh, and Jonesy. And um, look forward uh, to what's happening this weekend. I've got a clue what it is, obviously, because I just got back. But uh, no doubt, more news next week.